Good morning, YouTube land and the internet in general. Today I'm going to be doing a podcast about Karl Marx, his Communist Manifesto, his 10 rules for creating the utopian ideal that he put forth in his manifesto. And then we're going to think about what exactly is going on today and how these ideas have continued to live and are now even being touted in some instances as human rights. But let's begin. His first rule was abolish the, the abolition of property in land and applications and of all rents of land to go to the public purpose. Well, this one is a little archaic and difficult to follow, but what it really translates out to is the government gets to own all of the land. That includes all buildings, houses, everything. You cannot buy private land. And if you want to live in a house, or live in an apartment, or live in a condo, or you want to open a business, you have to pay a rent to the government for the use of the land that you're going to use. Now, the second rule is a heavy progressive or graduated income tax. Well, what is a progressive income tax, first of all? It's basically what we have here in the United States already, and it's pretty weird. What basically it states is that each level of income quality that a person has, they have to pay more of a percentage of their income in taxes. So right now, in this country, if you're making over the $250,000 a year as a couple or $150,000 a year as a single individual, you pay a higher percentage of that income in taxes than somebody making $50,000 a year does. That is what a graduated income tax is. They're, they're actually fairly regressive, but they call them progressive income taxes. And the reason they do is because they disproportionately affect the rich than they do the poor. In many progressive income tax systems, the poor people pay little or no taxation, yet gain large benefits from the country's government. Number three, the abolition of all rights of inheritance. That's right. Your parents can't leave you anything because everything belongs to the government. Now, the fourth one is confiscation of the property of all in all immigrants and rebels. That's right, you, you, you communists, you anno, anarcho-communists, and you intersectional feminists. If cultural Marxism gets its way, no immigrants will be allowed to have anything at all. And immigration will practically stop because no one will come to a country where they can't even possess their own means of survival. Number five is the centralization of credit in the hands of the state by means of a national bank with, a state, with state capital and exclusive monopoly rights. That's very much like a Federal Reserve Bank or a central bank of any kind. Number seven is the extension of factories and the instruments of production are to be owned by the state. The bringing into cultivation of the wastelands and the improvement of the soil generally in accordance with a common plan. I bet you can guess who most often falls under this category as to why they want a communist revolution. Number eight is equal liability of all to labor. The establishment of industrial armies, especially for agriculture. Number nine, 
the combination of agriculture with manufactured industries, gradual abolition of the distinction between town and country, uh, between town and county, uh, country, and by a more equitable distribution of the population over the country. Hey, all of you Democrats in the United States who complain about urban sprawl, communism actually demands it. And number 10 is the free education of all children in public schools, the abolition of children factory labor in its present form, and the combination of education with industrial production. Now, in the United States, many of these ideas have been partially implemented. In some countries, they are even further implemented. Let's look at number 10 first. In the United States, children have to go to school. It's mandatory. And the leftists have started taking over the schools and turning them into indoctrination centers. Now, one of the things that we did many, many, many years ago was put child labor laws on the books. Thank you again, Democrats, for pushing another idea that, that is dictated by Karl Marx for his utopian society. Now, does that mean I want to see kids working? No, I do not want to see kids working. But at this point, even 16, 17, and 18-year-olds in a lot of areas of the United States are disenfranchised and cannot find jobs to work. Now, the combination of agriculture with manufacturing industries, that basically means industrialization of the agricultural process. More machines, more mechanization, fewer farmers, big corporate factory farms, except they're not corporate, they're governmental factory farms. Yes, that's right. Beloved Karl Marx, the, the, the poster child of the left, wanted huge factory farms controlled by the government, dictating what people could and could not eat based on what they grew. Now, the, the gradual abolition of town and country literally means urban sprawl. He wanted to create more suburbs and less densely packed national cities, which is kind of weird because he also discusses taking over constant... Uh, taking over the transportation and making it centralized, well, the more you spread people out, the more difficult it is to transport them. Now, equal liability for of all to labor literally means that you will be forced to work. Period. End of story. Man, woman, doesn't matter. You are required by the state to work for the state however the state chooses. The state will educate you, the state will clothe you, the state will house you and feed you, and in turn, it owns you. You have to produce goods and services for the state. Period. End of story. You get no free will. Now, we were looking at all of these backwards in a more detailed kind of position. The next one was the extension of the factories to be owned by the state. Well, what does that mean? Well, that means that the state owns everything. Because at this point, the state has your land, the state has your methods of transportation, the state owns all of the agriculture, and the state now owns all of the factories. So that means the state owns everything. That also means that the state gets to choose what gets produced. Once again, absolutely no freedom here. Now, other things are bringing in to cultivation the wastelands. Well, you know, 
We're kind of doing that already, America. Look at the EPA and the Superfund sites. The EPA was originally created to deal with the Clean Water Act under Richard Nixon, a president who was impeached. Yet, now it's responsible for things such as the cleanup of the, of the chat off the lead mines in Kansas and in other places. And they have to clean up and make the soil good again. Well, here's another step towards communism brought to you by your friendly Democrat party. Also, a common plan for the general improvement of the soil quality of the nation. Guess who that is? Oh, wait. That's your local communist Green Party member. All of these environmental activists who are green on the outside and communist red on the inside. This is what they're preaching day in and day out. We have to protect the planet for the children. We need to be improving the forests for the children. We need to be improving the soil quality so that things are better because we have to protect the environment. Because Karl Marx said so. Now we talked about the means of transportation being centralized, but Karl Marx also believed that you didn't have the right to talk to people without the state telling you who you could talk to and how. Because he also mandated that all communication methods be centralized by the state. Do you realize if all communication all over the world were centralized, the internet would not exist? Because the internet itself was a creation by DARPA and the universities in the United States. Not Al Gore. Al Gore didn't build this, people. It was the U.S. government. Built it as part of an experiment for communication between facilities. Once they realized what they built, they allowed everybody to access it. They allowed the technology to be mass manufactured and produced and put out on the net and put out in the stores and people started talking to each other without the government's interference because the internet was not regulated. Now governments want to put regulations on the internet, especially in the United States with all these net neutrality laws. A lot of these net neutrality laws bring the power of the internet's communication capabilities under the control of the government, which centralizes it and governmentizes it. This is something we need to be avoiding, people. And everybody on the internet should be concerned about this. Because net neutrality will not give you faster internet. It's going to give power to the hands of politicians. Now, the centralization of credit. This is central banking. And this is a globalist idea that's been being pushed around for quite some time. I mean, we have the International Monetary Fund now, which is kind of a global bank. Here in the United States, we have the Federal Reserve. Most countries have a centralized federal bank. The problem with a central bank is that it's central. Somebody has control over it. That person gets to dictate how you interact with lending and borrowing what interest rates you can charge, who is worthy of credit and who is not. These decisions should be made by the two contractees, not by the federal government, not by any government, realistically. If a bank feels you're a bad risk to lend to, the bank should be the one making the decision, not a federal bank, not a group of bureaucrats. Now, the others are all about private purchasing, private property, and the ability of individuals to own things. So basically, what did Karl Marx want to do? Well, he wanted to take everything away from everybody and then create a government that would allow everybody to dictate what everybody got. It's a collectivist idea. And much of intersectional feminism, where we rank people with priority as to who is the most oppressed 
and they get to have the final say in any matter comes back to the collectivist idea of the proletariat and and ranking the proletariat by how hard they've been oppressed by the bourgeoisie this is insanity people insanity I'm a white male I'm a veteran I don't oppress anybody in fact I have almost no agency in what you want to do with your life all I ask is that you don't do things that interfere on my right to do things that's all anyone can ask so these are the ideas that Karl Marx stated had to happen and many of these ideas are being pushed by different political agenda groups most of which claim to be liberal and progressive and want to help you they believe that you're oppressed this is just Marxism in a social setting instead of an economic theory but the problem with Marxism is it doesn't work at all collectivism doesn't work individuals have desires they crave to become more they strive to gather more resources to make their life easier unless you can destroy these drives in the human psyche you cannot get this kind of a utopian philosophy to work because people will not abide it they might live under it for a time it might even be successful for a time and one of the things that Karl Marx talks about throughout his manifesto is that revolutions will need to occur over and over again and there will never be a final revolution no matter what happens the proletariat will have to stand guard against a new bourgeoisie forming in their government because the way Karl Marx describes it is everybody is oppressed by every government that's ever existed and each government oppressing has been overthrown by some group of individuals and the only way that the proletariat can reject the bourgeoisie or capitalist entrepreneur is to overthrow them and then continue to watch and protect themselves from the very same thing happening within their own ranks well here's a news flash Karl Marx even said that the proletariat would have disenfranchised bourgeoisie as members you will never get rid of the entrepreneurial drive even in communist Russia the USSR there was a black market for goods and people who could get the goods would sell them to other people who wanted them and so they had to start making laws to make things like Levi blue jeans illegal to own think about it well I guess this is enough ideological discussion for today especially with the fact that today is a slow news day and I will definitely be getting a video together later this week about the wrongs and rights within the bills uh, within the Declaration of Independence and maybe even get some news together about the rioting from the Antifa and anti-Nazis read communist here and the reason is, is they're supporting the anarcho-communist ideals which means that you punch fascist in the face and don't get in trouble but I'll be looking at these things later this week and hopefully getting them brought up on YouTube so that you can all hear my thoughts on this until then have a good day YouTube